Hi lovely people, and oh my goodness, yes, I've I've actually made a requested video. You're gonna have to excuse me if I seem a bit nervy today. Uh, I was just reading some more back issues of the Dark Phoenix saga, and now I'm really emotional. <laughs> because apparently the X-Men are my life sometimes. You may also have to excuse me if I keep checking my phone, which is on my lap, which I will keep doing a lot, because I am waiting. I'm waiting for a very important text because I could become an auntie at any moment. Uh, no, okay, well, I'll get the text saying she's gone to labour. That's something. Yes, if you didn't know, Claudia's sister is pregnant. We're going to be aunties. Now we've got all of the excuses out of the way, let's get on to the actual meat of this video. And that's giving you an update on my diet situation and telling you about the supplements that I'm currently taking. Let's begin with a little history lesson in the food that Jessica put in her mouth and whether or not that was a good idea. My parents very much have a policy when I was a child, and to be fair they still have that policy now, that you just eat everything. Whatever is put on your plate, you eat it. There's always one thing on your plate that she knows you don't like to make you eat it and make you try it so that you're trying new things. It's a great idea, like, I'd probably do it with my own children, but it wasn't a great idea for me. See, I'm quite happy to eat anything. There aren't many foods that I choose not to eat. Even, like, I hate olives. I hate olives, they are so disgusting. And yet, if there are olives at a party handed around or something, I will eat them because I feel like I need to train myself to like them. Even when I was a tiny baby and all I had to eat, eat, drink I suppose, was my mother's milk, it still there was something very wrong with my insides, which I now know is because I have a connective tissue problem. And ergo, my whole organs, they just don't, they just don't work so well. They just don't work so well. But as a child, no one knew that. So I would be eating dinner every night and about 20 minutes after we finished, every night I would get horrific stomach pains, really bad cramping, I'd be on the floor like, oh, doing my homework. And then the Romans did this, ow. Oh. Then when I was 17, as everyone knows, everyone who watches this channel knows, but hey, you might be new, you might not know. When I was 17, I paralysed both of my arms for a year and a half and the doctor thought that I might have some kind of a brain tumour so they did various tests on me, one of which went wrong and I, all my spinal fluid leaked out and I was incredibly, incredibly ill, very, very unwell and I couldn't eat anything because I was just vomiting, basically my body just rejected everything. I also got pumped with a lot of drugs um, I, I don't even know what drugs were given to me, largely because I was a child and nobody, <laughs> nobody tells you anything. Yeah, 17. You're still on the children's ward. Believe me, I looked really strange. I was about five times the size of everyone else there. I'm, I'm five, nine and a half. The nurses were probably about five, two, five, three. It would, they'd need at least three of them to get me anywhere. But basically all of the drugs that went through my body stripped me of all the good bacteria that lives in your stomach and in your guts. So my ability to eat got worse and worse and worse, even as I was getting better from this. I, every night, uh, would be vomiting just an hour even. I couldn't, you just, I just couldn't stop it. Just my body would reject everything because I wasn't digesting anything either, it just sort of sat in my stomach all day long. I'm definitely going to put some kind of warning about vomiting at the start of this video. Warning, now, if you missed that as well. And the sickness seemed, instead of getting a bit better, it just seemed to get worse and worse and worse. And it got down to the point where I was being sick after drinking water, and I was getting weaker and something I I now notice is that when I'm tired or weak, obviously my ability to eat gets worse and the less you eat, the weaker you get, the weaker I am, the sicker I get. So you just tend to, you just tend to spiral and I still have to watch that, be very careful with that. And at the time I was, I was always still a minor and some stuff happened in hospital 
mainly that there were certain doctors who thought that I had an eating disorder. Purely because I was a teenage girl. Like, thanks guys, thanks. Not gonna research what's wrong with my stomach? No, just gonna, just gonna put me on the psych ward. I will say at the time that I definitely, I definitely panicked quite a lot um, when it came to food. Because so many things were making me ill, I kind of developed like safe foods that I knew wouldn't make me so sick. Third vomit warning, third vomit warning. The safe foods were actually probably less about what didn't make me sick and more about what wasn't awful when you saw it for a second time. So things like rice pudding and ice cream. But don't, you know, there are certain things you don't want to eat. I mean, a curry, for instance, that's not fun. And anything involving wasabi, it comes back straight through your nose. So yeah, having, <laughs> having the safe foods probably didn't help much. Um, so I had the dietitians at the hospital who were putting me on all of these different diets, which were so much worse and my stomach felt like it was getting more out of control, some of which helped a bit. And at the same time, I was trying to find ways to protect my stomach, essentially. And I was still being pumped with loads and loads of drugs. And then I also had this other group of doctors who were talking over me and telling my parents that it was essentially my fault that this was happening to me. <laughs> anyway, it's a kind of period in my life that is awful and hard and I guess I don't talk about that much because if I think about it too much, I cry like you wouldn't believe. If I one day write a book about my life, um, it will probably feature and I will tell you everything in that, but maybe it's not something I can discuss. Listen to your kids. There you go. Moral for the day. Eventually though, adult. I, I, I did, got to do some adulting and tell those particular doctors to shove off out of my life. No, no, no. I, I was like, no, I'm going to take control. I'm going to find the thing. I'm going to find the thing that helps myself. I can save myself. Yeah, I think it was my hospital's dietitian who suggested to me the ketogenic diet, which is where you have absolutely no carbs or any kind of starches. All you have are fats and proteins, and in fact, it's mainly fats. Mainly fats and a little bit of protein. It's something that bodybuilders do quite a lot, and it really works for children who have epilepsy, and it's been shown to help um, with people who have neurological problems neurological and neuropathic problems, so issues with their nerves. Well hey, that's this girl. So I started that and it did almost feel kind of magical, the change, the way that it happened. Suddenly I had lots of energy, well, energy compared to what I'd had before. Um, I wasn't being sick all the time. Well, didn't feel so weak. I felt like I was finally beginning to get my body back on track. Like I was putting on a bit of muscle, which was really nice. I say body back on track. That's because my body looked like this. That's my brother, by the way. So they get ketogenic. But the problems with the ketogenic diet are that you have to eat constantly, constantly. So I'd be eating like eight times a day and it's really expensive because all you're eating is fats and proteins. Two pounds for your bag of rice, and it can last you for an entire week. But then if you buy some chicken thighs, that's like four pounds, and that's two meals. Oh. You basically can't go out even, because you have to carry your little tub of cream cheese with you. So I did that, I go to class with my tub of cream cheese. Um, and because your body's in a ketogenic state, it uses just fat to power you. The only energy you have comes from your own body fat. So if you've not got much of that to start with, that's not great. And if you don't eat enough, you get horrendous headaches. But we pulled that back and the ketogenic diet morphed into the low carb diet. So now I also had vegetables, 
green vegetables, leafy vegetables, any vegetables that were grown above the ground, um, root vegetables, I still had an awful lot of trouble digesting, that was just not going to happen. And some fruits, but not sweet fruits, so berries were fine, but bananas wouldn't be. Um, even strawberries, if they were too sweet, sweet they wouldn't be. Around this time I also found that my ability to eat red meat was declining. And so it was, you know, turkey, chicken, and fish and seafood, those are the only proteins, or oh, eggs, eggs were protein, dairy, well no actually dairy wasn't that great either, <laughs> yeah, so that was all I was eating, any kind of carb was a complete no-go, any kind of sugar my body would read as poison essentially, it's a thing where you basically get a whole body muscle spasm, but essentially for 10 years of my life that worked a bit, I just had to avoid any of the stuff I couldn't have, and I was okay. And people were wondering, I made a video about this, and people were saying, what, how can you eat? What can you eat? And I'm like, looking back, excellent question. So yeah, from the ages of 17 to 27, I just didn't eat carbs. And then I met Claudia, and she was like, okay, you know, I can kind of get behind this, but also weird really weird. Have you considered maybe that you might have some kind of a bigger problem that needs fixing? When was the last time you even saw a doctor about this? And I kind of had a problem, obviously, when it came to doctors relating to any kind of food or stomach issues, for obvious and very fair reasons. Sorry if the camera angle just changed, there was a dog issue. So I met Claudia. Uh, Claudia's family and medical, so she took me to some new doctors, some new gastroenterologists, some new dietitian, and they were like, okay, well, I think your issue with not being able to eat any kind of starches or sugars probably isn't something that you should just ignore for the rest of your life. Maybe we should try and fix it, and then you can eat more stuff. I was a little scared. I was a little scared. I was apprehensive, because, you know, if you've done something for 10 years, Changing that kind of feels like a, a big leap, very big leap. And I was pretty terrified of just being so sick all over again. So clearly took me to these new doctors and they discovered that my problem was that the good bacteria in my stomach and my gut had been basically just decimated. And I was saying a thing called candida, which is a type of infection that lives in your gut and you can blast it with lots of good bacteria or you can go on the candida diet which is when i made those videos about starting the candida diet i did a whole like week one on the candida diet and i was going to do a whole every single week and because i think it takes i can't remember now actually oh is it six weeks and then there are just these certain foods that you can eat blah 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 it, 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 mm. I guess for some people it does work really well, but for me, like I've already got an illness, I've already got a energy condition, and I can't run on no food. Um, so that yeah, the week one on the Canada diet was the most awful thing. Hello, sweetie. I and I was so low emotionally as well. I I sat in the bath and cried every evening, and Georgia came back like. What's happened to you? So Claudia's like, just stop this, this is ridiculous. You're not even functioning as a human being right now. So I stopped it. And one of the things though, this broth involves a lot of onions and celery. And throughout this week, I still had like the terrible bloating and pain and it was just really bad stomach ache. So I went back to the gastroenterologist who was like, well, your candid is gone, so yay. <laughs> Pills you gave me as well. And now everything sucks. I hate my life. I didn't, that's very melodramatic. So okay, well this thing you can try, it's called the low FODMAP diet. I actually made a video that explains the ins and outs of the low FODMAP diet. And what that is, is basically taking away different types of sugars. But it's not just sugars as you think, like cane sugar or fruit sugars. It's also sort of carbohydrates that turn into sugars. I made a video that kind of explains this a little bit more, but it's things like onions. So I cut these things out of my diet, and she's like, well, you know, now your candida's cleared, 
you can try to eat some other foods and even some carbohydrates. I was like, oh, I can't, milady, I've not eaten carbs for 10 years, how will I cope? But a little bit a day, starting like an inch at a time, getting more and more, um, I was introduced to this magical thing called a sweet potato. Oh, it was so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still eat sweet potato every day. But through eating a little bit of sweet potato, I then started to introduce a little bit of rice, like a tiny little bit of rice grains, a little bit of rice flour. So it's a year on, and I could probably eat just under one portion of rice. Now it varies in the type of rice. I do find the brown rice, like a darker, Writers are actually much harder for me to digest. That's not necessarily a FODMAP thing. That's just that the actual, I have a very delicate digestion. But it means that I can eat this wonderful thing called dim sum. And I'm obsessed with dim sum. So yeah, let's see. I would say in the last year, my energy levels have, have actually dramatically increased. I mean, it's so difficult to notice because it changes day by day by day and it's such a small thing but looking all the way back now I can see just how much of a difference being able to eat a little bit of rice and a little bit of root vegetables has made to my life. I used to take a nap every single day for about two hours. I mean and yeah chronic I can't say that I don't have chronic fatigue anymore but it is greatly reduced. My immune system is, a lo I mean, I love it. I keep swiping my nose because I have a cold right now. Well, I, this year I've managed to get through from November to where we are now. So only, let's see, three colds, one chest infection, and sinusitis. And that is amazing. That is doing really, really well for me, okay? I used to be the girl who got bronchitis and pneumonia at Christmas. So, we're doing well. It's also really handy to be able to eat carbs when you go out. Dim sum or sushi. <laughs> and actually pain, that's something I've noticed that is a huge difference now, a year later. My stomach used to constantly be bloated, painful, I get excruciating cramps. And now, it's so rare guys, it's so rare. So root vegetables and I, we're still a work in progress. Regular potato, not, not so good. Not so good. Work in progress there as well. Sweet potato, that's my friend. Would I recommend the FODMAP diet? Yes, to everyone. <laughs> I don't care if you think you don't have stomach issues. Try it, it's awesome. Would I recommend a low carb diet? Yes, if you have a stronger digestion than me. I think it actually really does work if you've got chronic fatigue. I think it's great. I think I had some of the most energy of my life when I was just living on fat. Is it sustainable? No, no, no it's not. But of course, the one thing that I should stress more than anything else is the importance of research. Research your stuff, talk to doctors, read some books, maybe even go on the internet, but you know, internet, pinch of salt. Definitely don't listen to random YouTubers, but <laughs> Me. There are options out there, don't be like me. Don't just, for 10 years, stick in one box. Another thing that has really, really helped me are the supplements that I take. Claudia researched the hell out of these and made me a little plan of what I should take. And, and I follow that religiously. She's a great wife. And so here are the supplements that I now take. Cod liver oil. This is one of the best sources of omega-3 fatty acids. It also contains a relatively high amount of vitamin A and vitamin D. Eating with a meal helps to slow the breakdown of carbs into sugar. A, it helps to relieve joint stiffness, and I've actually really noticed when taking it in higher quantities than you are supposed to, it helps repair my nails, hair, and skin. Also linked to improved cognitive performance. Magnesium. Magnesium is crucial to a body's function. It keeps your blood pressure normal, your bones strong, and your heart rhythm steady. It also lowers inflammation. Complete B. All of the B vitamins. Supports energy yielding metabolism and contributes to the reduction of tiredness and fatigue. 
So yay. Eka, 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 eka. Okay, I can't spell that. Echinacea. Thanks, Google. Echinacea is a very popular herbal remedy that Claude's mother always made her take and I've found it works for me too. The herb encourages the immune system and reduces symptoms of colds, flu, infections and some other illnesses. I'm currently living off Lempsip as I've had a constant cold for the past two months, but it is way better than in previous years so I've definitely noticed a change. Zinc. Zinc boosts your immune system, treats the common cold and can help prevent respiratory infections. Very good. Also helps with my eczema and apparently tinnitus, but I haven't noticed a difference, so pinch of salt. It also should improve athletic ability and strength, but how, how would I know? Iron. Iron supports the creation of red blood cells. It helps reduce tiredness and fatigue, fights anemia, and you know, I have to take it because I'm a woman and I need that stuff, okay? Coenzyme Q10. CoQ10 is similar to a vitamin and it's found in every cell of the body. Your cells use it to produce energy your body needs for cell growth and maintenance. It also works as an antioxidant and protects your body that way. Coenzymes work to digest food and perform other body processes. I like to think it's helping my energy levels, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> Propolis. This stuff smells like hell. It's disgusting. It's sap mixed with bee spit. Propolis protects against some bacteria, viruses, and fungi, and it's definitely helped my immune system. Glucosamine. Glucosamine delays the breakdown of damaged cartilage and can help repair it. It supposedly helps my ligaments, tendons, and synovial fluid, which thanks to my connective tissue disorder are rubbish. Flaxseed oil. Again, this helps with joint pain. I take it to help aid digestion because it is easier than soaking flax seeds every day overnight. It's also very useful for a whole list of things I don't have. Potassium is a pretty vital ingredient for my muscles. It stops cramps and helps low blood pressure. It's really good if you have pots actually. It's also good for organ regulation, including my heart, which occasionally does weird things, just for the hell of it. There you go, a quick, when's everything I ever do quick? A quick update on my current eating um, and my supplement regime. If you have any questions, please do let me know down below in the comments. If you've been through a similar thing to any of the stuff that I discussed, let me know, largely so I don't feel so alone.